Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight as we have gathered under your feet. Our hands are lifted. We ask the Lord the heavens will open upon us. That you will release your power and your presence over this gathering. The Bible said Jesus went to preach and the power of God was present to heal. We declare today the Lord as we have gathered here in this auditorium. You will release the anointing, the grace and the power for healing over us. That none here will live the same. We declare in the name of Jesus that thy kingdom come that will be established in our lives. We pronounce the Lord unresolved issues to be resolved. Errors will be corrected. In this one week convention we pronounce the Lord may we see the tangibility of your power in our lives. Now we come against forces of darkness and powers of evil. We declare in the name of Jesus that this is the gathering of the saints of God. And therefore, let anything that followed us here, let any force and any power that followed us here to rob us and to deny us of the blessing that is due us. Today, we pronounce the law, let their powers be revoked. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we come against ruling forces, master spirit powers whose assignment is to limit us we pronounce today the bible said where the word of the king is there is power there is liberty oh lord let your people live in liberty oh lord let your people live in freedom oh lord let souls be loose and destinies be set free now touch my tongue with the coal of fire let me not communicate the mind of man or the understanding of man but let me speak that is that which is on your very mind to your people for those online and those on site that today liberation deliverance will come to your people in the name of jesus do it oh god but take the glory for yourself in jesus mighty name i subject myself and submit myself under the influence and the rulership of the spirit of the living God in Jesus mighty name thank you father we bless you Lord saints if you believe that clap your hands and shout a big amen please take your seats verse 11 now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth tree which was in Ophrah which belonged to Joas the Abizrite while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianite the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him the Lord is with you you mighty man of Vela Gideon said to him oh my Lord if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles which our fathers told us about? Saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianite. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the land of the Midianite. Have I not sent you? The verse number 15. So he said to him, O oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my father's house. The Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. Hallelujah. Then he said to him, if I found favor in your sight, then show me a sign that it is you who talk with me. Praise God. Tonight, I want to set the ball rolling on our theme for this year's convention. On this error must be corrected. 
Israel, in their course of their prophetic journey, deliverance from Egypt into the promised land that God was giving to them, they came to a point in time in their life after the death of Moses. Then a leader rose up, his name was Joshua, and after the death of Joshua, the Bible said there was no leader among them, and so people did everything that they liked in their own sight. What was pleasing, what men thought was right. Everybody was entitled to their opinion. And for what they have done for several years, God allowed an enemy to handle them and to deal with them. In the chapter number six, the Bible said that they wept sore, they were in great distress. And as they cried, their voice came to God. And one time God decided that he was going to bring deliverance to them. You must understand that the Midianites were like one of the constant enemies that Israel dealt with. Of course, the Midianites were a group of persons that also came from the marriage between Abraham and Keturah. So it was like dealing with an enemy that was from the family. Jesus made a statement. He said the man's enemy will be that of his own household. When you are fighting something that you don't know, sometimes uh, it, it can keep you in a little bit of some comfortable zone. But when you are dealing with somebody that you know, it can be quite painful, especially if it's from within your own home. And so when they kept fighting one time, the Bible said, an angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon in the verse number 11. The first thing you will need or the key thing that happens or which is replete in scripture, very consistent with the Bible is the fact that whenever you are in distress or dealing with an issue, God will always send you a visitation. Most times people are thinking that there is going to be some quick answer from somewhere. But more, more often than not, when you are dealing with a challenge, the key thing is that God will send you a visitation. And I pray that in this convention, the Lord will visit each and every one of us. The Bible said when the angel came, he said to Gideon, he appeared to him and the first statement he made was that, he said, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you was not really of an issue, Bishop, because for every Israeli, they know that God is with them. Because that was a covenant that God had cut with their father. As a matter of truth, many years after, when even Solomon built the temple of the Lord, God had made a covenant that anyone that will come in here and pray, I, the Lord, will show the person mercy. So God being with me as an Israeli is not really an issue. I look at Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who were given Babylonian names. And often you will read your scripture that these were the men that defiled the orders of the king. And they said they were never going to bow to the idol that Nebuchadnezzar had made. And as much as that sounded like a statement of faith, it was not just only a statement of faith, it was also a statement of a training they have received. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's refusal to bow to the golden calf image by the king of Babylon was not only about faith, it was also about the kind of training they have received. The Bible says here, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. So for every indigenous Israel, it will be very difficult for that person to bow to any other God except the God of the heavens and earth. They don't need to have an encounter with this God. But the training they have received, they have been taught. And that was the reason why when God gave the laws to Moses, during the days whilst they were in the wilderness, one of the instructions the Lord gave them was that to write the law on their doorposts. So that when you come out and when you go in, you will read it. And God instructed them to put it on the breast of their kids, of, of their children. It's like a placard 
wherever you are walking, that law is imprinted in your heart. So God be with me is something that I am already aware of. As a matter of fact, he's supposed to be with me. The issue is that if God is with me, why am I suffering the things I'm suffering? And that is the question that Gideon was trying to seek from the angel of the law. Allow me a little bit to, to progress or to push you to various angles because, you see, when, when, when we talk about God being with an individual, even those who claim that God does not exist, the Bible refers to them as fools because in their heart and nature and creation itself proves the existence of God. There are 10 arguments that have been made about God's existence. The first argument is the, cosmo, is the cosmological argument. That argument is taken from the cosmos, the Greek. Now, that argument was propounded from the law or from the point of cause and effect. The existence of an effect is an indication of the existence of a cause. Are you still with me? That you are seeing an effect of something means that there is a cause for that thing. So now we are in the world. The world is now existing. Where does it come from? Who is behind it? We must trace it. And so by the tracing of creation, it traces to an invisible hand, an invisible power, an invisible being, a supreme authority. That is God. And so that is the first argument that has been propounded by philosophers on the existence of God. Number two, the second argument that has been propounded was the creation of man. That is anthropological argument. Now, anthropological talks about man, the existence of man. When we look at man, in fact, it is the greatest argument about God's existence because the existence of an intelligent man is a clear indication of the works of the existence of an intelligent God. Man in his weakest form is higher than all animals that are created together and better off than the most handsome ape. Forget about Charles Darwin theory and all that. All these things are signs to deviate or run away from reality. To understand the fact or realize that the intelligence of man is that high. It's a clear indication that the God that we serve might have been a very intelligent God. Far back in Genesis 11, when God sent... Are you still following me? Are you still following me? I don't want to lose you. Just follow me. Far back in Genesis 11, when God sent flood to destroy the earth, after the flood, the Bible said a group of persons came together, man of God, and they decided they were going to build a tower that will go up into the sky. The reason for the building of the tower so that in the next season, should that peradventure God sends another rain, we can be able to escape. So even the skyscrapers we are seeing today, our progenitors far back in the book of Genesis have imagined to build something like that that will go all the way up into the sky. That is a level of intelligence. Who is behind this creation? There must be a God. The Bible said we are the workmanship of God. Now watch me now. Workmanship is not the money you receive after a labor. Workmanship is not the money you receive at the end of the month. Contrary to that understanding, workmanship is the pay you receive by the skill you have exhibited. So when the Bible said we are the workmanship of God, by the time I look at how beautiful you are, handsome you are, and understand your level of intelligence, it tells me the skill of the God I serve, his level of understanding, and his level of supremacy. Am I speaking here tonight? Talamahasa. So your existence is a proof that there is a God. No, 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 higher. It's going to get better right here. Help me, Holy Spirit. To come to the place of denying that he 
does not exist is a non-starter. This is not the argument. The argument here is that I have been with him with all these things put together. I know, I know that he's there. But if he's there, why do I see all these troubles around my life? Why have I served him for several years? And what are the wonders our fathers have told us? Psalm 44, oh, how we have heard the stories of old. You drove away the hiddies and you gave them the land not by their right hand, but it was by your countenance because you favored them. What are the wonders of our God? This was the question that Gideon was seeking an answer for from the angel of the Lord. The angel looked at him again and he never spoke a word. When God comes to you with a visitation, he doesn't come to argue with you. He comes to give you an instruction. When God comes, he comes to give you an instruction. And then he said to him, number two, he said, you are a mighty man of valor. That even make the whole case worse. Gideon now said, how do you refer to me as a mighty man of valor? In the weakest clan, I am the weakest. In fact, the weak calls me weak and the poor calls me poor. The foolish calls me foolish. God looked at him and he said, go in that same might and deliver Israel as one man from the hand of Midian. Today, I came to present to you that you are an error corrector. When Israel was dealing with the issue of an arrow carrying a God that was heavy, but they were constantly being defeated. They were defeated to the point that even what they grow, they have to hide to harvest it. And God said, The solution to your trouble is around you. There is no situation you are handling today that the solution is far away from you. For every error you are experiencing in your life, the solution is around you. Before God created Adam and Eve, after creating every other thing, man was the last person he brought in. By filling the sea with the fishes and by causing plants to come forth on the earth. All these were statements God was making to man that everything you will ever need I have provided before creating you. And so, your solution is older than your problem. In fact, your solution is older than your error. But Israel could not identify her. And God has to come and point out that to them that there is a man within you who carries the power and the ability and what it takes to correct an error in your life. Telemahasiya kadabahaya. Gideon asks, how can this be? Because... I am the weakest among the clan. I am the weakest in the society. I am the weakest in my family. I am the weakest in this battle. Have you ever come to a point in your life where you are dealing with an error? You are dealing with a fight. As much as you pray in tongues, as much as you, you are baptized, as much as you give and do all these things, you look at your life. There is something about your life that does not tally with the God you are serving. There is something about your life that does not sync with the Jesus you are calling. There is something about your life that does not match with the, girl you are, the, the God you are calling with your nice makeup with your nice suit with your nice grammar with your nice car with your nice house there is something about your life that is like a bat it does not tally with the God you are serving and you are feeling weak you are feeling depressed it doesn't look like you can conquer the fight but God is telling you today you are the one that will correct the error from your house among your family in your society in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are the one God is about to raise to correct such error from your background, from your father's house, and from your mother's house. And in the name of Jesus, I came all the way from Accra to Tema to tell you, Action Chapel, Christ Cathedral, every error in your life, every error in your death.
destiny. God is raising you as one man to bring correction into your house. Clap your hands right now and shout, I am an error corrector. Sound engineer, help me. For the NS expectation of creation eagerly awaits the manifestations of the sons of God your community is on your shoulders your nation is on your shoulders your city is on your shoulders your family is on your shoulders God is speaking to you you are the one man you are the one woman that will break the backbone and the neck of poverty and premature death and backwardness and stagnation in the background in the family some of us are coming from homes where we look around ourselves we look around our homes there is nobody we can point out to there is no man there is no woman we can point out to this is the man God has raised for us but in the name of Jesus in this prophetic convocation God is speaking to you I'm about to raise you as an entrepreneur I'm about to raise you as a prophet I'm about to raise you as a bishop I'm about to raise you as a professor I'm about to raise you as a politician I'm about to raise you as a warrior you will come and this you will conquer territories. I said you will conquer territories. You will conquer territories. You will gain crowns in the name of Jesus. What fought your father, you will fight it. What fought your mother, you will defeat it. What brought your family down, you will bring it down. If I hear your shout, power located. Watch me. Thank God for the prayers of people. And thank God for divine helpers. And thank God people are positioned around our life. But there are some fights and there are some battles. It will take you and you alone. You are the one man. You are the one woman. You will stop the nonsense in your house. You will bring down stagnation in the house. You will break the back on the premature death in the house. You are the one man. And you are saying, man of God, I don't feel powerful. Man of God, I don't feel the energy. You don't need to feel powerful. The power is available. And today in the name of Jesus, plug into the power, plug into the grace, plug into the anointing. I prophesy over your life now. Everybody under the sound of my voice, I call on Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. one man you will conquer as one man in the name of the Lord Jesus as one man God sent me to tell you you are the one that will correct the error God sent me to tell you you are the one that will correct that error and today from the northern region to the Volta region from the Ashanti region to the Eastern region wherever you are coming from by the power of the Holy Ghost I come to speak to you. There is a mark on your forehead. Heaven is calling your name. Come on now, bring it on. Come on here. Come closer. Come closer now. Heaven is calling your name. Heaven is calling your name. Heaven is calling your name. God is relying on you. God is relying on you. God is relying on you. I said God is relying on you. You will finish this chapel. You will complete this project in the name of Jesus. You will, I said, you will finish this project by the power of the Holy Ghost. I pray today, receive the fire, receive the favor, receive the grace, receive the power. If I hear your sound, power locates you. Let go 
As we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we are surrounded by the number of a company of angels. We are cheering you all. You are the woman of Pharaoh. You are the man of Pharaoh. He said, Keep fighting. He said, Keep pressing. He said, Keep moving. Don't you dare die. Don't you dare call yourself weak. Don't you dare call yourself poor. Don't you dare call yourself depressed. I am not depressed. I am not in trouble. I am under grace. I am not under attack. I am under power. I call and I say, today I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Seven months from now, six months from now, the story is changing. The narrative is changing. The history is changing. Let the power look at you now. Clap your hands and shout, I am an arrow for it. Watch me. Watch me. You don't have to feel the power. You don't need to feel the power. I remember 2018, I was preaching in Togo. In a church like this, over thousands of people, huge crowd. Five minutes into my preaching, they brought a girl into the service. They were at the entrance. I saw commotion, and I realized that my interpreter could not concentrate. So I asked, what is going on? She said, a girl died in the house, and they are bringing her into the service. They are trying to push her into the room, but the protocol says no. I said, bring her. They brought her, and in my mind, I said, just put her there. They put her on the altar, and the girl was there. I said to myself, at the end of the day, I will preach, and I'll pray. If she does not resurrect, I'm not the one who killed her. Just so that I can have my chance to do my preaching. But five minutes into the preaching, I heard a voice, and the voice said, pray for her. So I went, and I lifted her. And I prayed. And you see, after prayer, I told my host, Reverend Israel, I said, lift her up. They lifted the girl up, and then she just dangled her neck. It's like, watch this. It's like my prayer killed her more. She didn't resurrect. They just dangled her neck like went back. So I prayed again and prayed again. Have you prayed before? And the more you pray, the worse things get. The more you pray, the worse it gets. So I prayed and I prayed again. And I lay my hands on her chest. I call her name forth. Before I could say Jack, this little girl took a deep breath. That day, listen. That day, everybody in the church, they emptied their pockets on the altar. And guess what happened? When I, before I came into the service, usually when I'm going to preach, I'll not eat. But when I looked at the distance from Accra to Togo, and they brought me that British breakfast in the hotel, I saw it. I said, no, let this cup not pass me by. I will eat this thing. I ate it. And I took the juice they brought, and I was just relaxed. I didn't feel the power before the girl came back to life. I'm telling you, there are things God knows you can do that you don't know you can do. There are things you can do that you are not aware you can do. That is why God is not bothered. God is not bothered about this. You are depressing. I am not in the mood. You are moody. You are sad. You better come out of that mood. You better come out of that depressed state. Am I speaking to somebody here? And in the name of Jesus, I came to tell you, whatever state you are in now, come out. I said, come out. I said, come out. I said, come out. Whatever state the devil has put you in, today by the fire of God, I call you out. Out of the grave. Out of poverty. Out of sickness. Out of depression. Out of backwardness. Out of the curse. You better come out. Sakata, 
son of man, can this dry bone live? He said, oh God, thou knoweth. He said, prophesy to the bones. There are things you can do that you don't know you can do. When God created you, he engineered you with some abilities. I like to preach it this way. The Bible compares us with certain trees and animals. The Bible says, the righteous are like the palm tree planted by the rivers of water. What is a palm tree? A palm tree has the ability and the tenacity to go all the way down in the midst of a storm and a volcano, but it also has the power to bounce back. No matter how it goes down, it has the capacity city to bounce back that is who you are they push you down but you can bounce back you push me down that I may fall but God shall stand I know sir I know your business went down but bounce back I know your ministry went down but bounce back I know your prayer life went down but bounce back your finances went down, but bounce back. I know your marriage went down, but bounce We are winners in this kingdom. We are victors in this kingdom. We are winners in this kingdom. We are victorious in this kingdom. Today I came to speak. Action Chapel, by the power of God, wherever you are, the power of the Holy Ghost is upon you tonight. The anointing of the miracle is upon you tonight. And in the name of Jesus, in this conference, receive an anointing. Receive the grace. Receive the power. Receive the oil. Receive the unction. To pass. That is why our fathers of old, they will tell you, they will pray and say, Lord, speak to us in a language you will understand. He wants to speak to Joseph. And he was just trying to tell him, a time will come, the entire world will bow to you. So he showed him the moon and the sun, which is the cosmos, talking about the system of the world that will bow to him years to come. If you study your scripture and you study world history, that account was not only recorded in scripture, it was also recorded in the history of men. It was the entire world that went to Egypt. At the time there was famine, it was not only the Israelis, the whole world traveled all the way to Egypt for food. And that's what God was showing David, Joseph, just by showing him the moon and the sun. He speaks at his level. He doesn't speak at your level. Your level is too low. Uh, God, come to my level. Which level are you? Your poverty level? Your sickness level? Your grave level? God is not going to come to that level. God wants you to come up either to his level. Am I speaking to somebody here? In the name of Jesus, I declare today by the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost, come out of that level. Another level. Another level. The next level. The next phase. The next level of your life, of your ministry, of your career, of your destiny. The next level. Come up. Come up. I used to agree with people, Bishop. Those days when we are giving up and so we see. Those who don't have are comfortable. God knows I don't have. God knows I don't have a thousand. God knows I don't have seven hundred. God knows I don't have a ten thousand. And we are comfortable with that statement. What you should have said is that I have to move out of this level. By the time they call for ten thousand dollars to support a building, a project, a mission, I must be the first person to double it times two a gift. People want us to pamper them. 
God doesn't come to pamper you. God comes to shake you. God comes to challenge you. God comes to move you. Am I speaking to somebody here? God comes to put a challenge on your life. This year, the challenges, there is an error in your house. Who will correct it? You are the one that must correct it. certain bank, several of the branches, he's a big guy, he's a man of God, I had a call from so so and so, and they said they have submitted my name, and they want to kill me, so I'm supposed to go here and do A, B, C, D, when he finished talking on the phone, I said to him, I said in the name of Jesus, I am standing here, you are not going there, and I said the next time they call you, put me on the call is either we kill them or they disappear why am I here I am anointed to deal with your issue am I speaking to somebody here why are you in your house God wait, 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 wait. God knows why he allowed you to come into a house where everybody is dying God knows why he allowed you to come into a house where there is poverty God knows why he allowed you to come into a space when everybody is going down what is the reason he has anointed you to stop that nonsense he has anointed you to bring a heart to what is going on and therefore do not run back don't turn your back don't run away from the fight don't run away from the battle start and fight Stand and win. Stand and prevail. Stand and conquer. I prophesy over your life right now by the anointing of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Receive the fire. Receive the oil. Receive the mantle. Receive the mandate. Clap your hands now and shout, I receive it. The next time you go to your office and something is not going well, you are there. Why are you in that office? Why must I be here for you to go and consult a madam? Why must I be here for you to say you are going to your hometown? I am here for you. In the name of Jesus, today when you leave, go back to your room. Stand in that house. Stand in that shop. Command the customers. Am I speaking to somebody here? Command your debtors. Command your helpers by the power of God. There is an anointing on your head. You are the man of Fela. You are the woman of Fela. You are the anointed one. You are the mighty one of war. I prophesy over you today in the name of Jesus as I pray for you and speak into your life. Receive a fresh energy. Receive a fresh fire. Receive a fresh power. If I hear your sound, power locates you. watch this so if God is with me why do I have this error in my life some of the errors are God created errors God intentionally allows the error you know why you know why God also has a problem <laughs> the day Satan was cast out of the heavens the Bible said rejoice O ye heavens and he said woe to the inhabitants of the earth they were rejoicing and they said, woe unto you. God also has a problem. God had a problem and he was trying to look for who to attach his problem to. For instance, John the Baptist's father, Zacharias, was a righteous man. He and his wife, the Bible calls them, Luke calls them righteous people, but they were barren. They served God faithfully, but they were barren. Do you know what it means? to preach about something that is not happening in your own life. Do you know what it means to come to church every day and be serving and be giving and be doing all this and still not seeing some results of your life? That was what happened to John the Baptist's father. But God in his calendar needed a forerunner that will go ahead before he himself will come and convert himself into a man. So he looked down on the earth 
and he needed a man that is faithful who also needs a child. But this is the problem. The problem is that the timing of God, the time he wants to send a forerunner is not the time I want to have my child. The time God wants to send John the Baptist so that he will go ahead of Jesus is not the time I want to have my child. And guess this, when you work with God, there are some errors you need to trust him for him to resolve it. What this? Watch this. You have to trust him to resolve it. John the Baptist just got married as a young pastor and he wants children so that he to prove a point and authenticate that God is with him. First year, first month, twins. Sometimes the, the barrenness or the adverse situation you are suffering can also make a statement that God is actually with you. And this is what happened. This is what happened to John. John was crying for a child. God said, I will give it to you. But I want us to do this at the time when I'm bringing forth my forerunner. If John the Baptist's father had had children at the time of his marriage, those children wouldn't have been known. Nobody would have known them. But God said, I'm attaching my problem to your problem so that the child I will give you will be the forerunner of the Messiah for the world. Choose between the timing of God and your timing. So when he had the child and he realized this man is a forerunner, God allows some things so that he can reveal his glory. And I tell you what, child of God, most times when you deal with an error, an error is not supposed to linger in your life forever. It has an expiry date. Every error that stays longer than expected is an error. Every error that stays longer than expected is an error. And today, I prophesy and I speak as a prophet of God over every individual here that in the name of Jesus, whatsoever that is due you, that you must have, whatsoever error that has lingered on in your life for so long a time by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God is wiping the error away from your life. God is taking the error away from your destiny. God is taking away the error from your life, from your marriage, from your health, from your business, your career. I declare under the power and the anointing of the Spirit of the living God, every error the devil has placed in your life as you put your hand on your head right now. Let the hand of the Lord rest on your head right now. Let the hand of the Lord rest on your kidneys right now. Let the hand of the Lord rest on your business right now. We speak to your children, your son in prison. We speak to your children, your husband, your wife at the hospital. We speak now to your brothers and sisters, home and abroad, and we declare whatsoever error that is on your life, there is a correction. a correction there is a correction there is a correction there is a correction there is a correction every error on your life we subject it to the altar right now every error in your life we subject it to the altar right now I was in London two months ago I was preaching in the United Kingdom I was preaching in MK Melton Kings and whilst I was ministering the church in ICGC church, I saw a lady, she was sitting about three rows from where I was standing and the Lord ministered to my spirit. He said, pray for her for a new job. I called her, I said, God told me you want a new job. She screamed, she said, yes. I drew my handkerchief on her. Immediately she fell. Two, seven days after I left that town, the lady got the job. What, what? The lady has been in the house for 10 years in the UK. If you think you are only suffering in Ghana, people are suffering in the places you want to go. Tell yes! Couldn't find a job. Something followed her here to that place. 
I declare today by the power of the Holy Ghost and the power that followed you to this room I came with an apostolic anointing to speak now in the name of Jesus anything that rendered you jobless and useless and return that in your work in your ministry in your calling today let it be taken from your life let it be removed from you now in Jesus name clap your hands and shout yeah I was a student at the University of Ghana. I was reading masters in medical physics and I was still preaching. One time I got up and I realized that my throat was choked. When I, when, when I preach, I'll preach freely. Immediately I'm done with the preaching. My throat will be choked. I feel like something was in my throat. I couldn't breathe. I went to hospital, Kolebu 37. I came to the University of Ghana Hospital. Finally, the doctor brought me to an ENT. He said, this is the only British train ENT that we have. So he will help you. The man examined me, ran all kinds of tests. I went and came back, went and came back. He said, young man, there is nothing wrong with you. I said, there is something wrong with me. He said, I can't find anything. I said, sir, what do you do? He said, no, I just hope that you get healed. I went home that day. There are some fights between you and God. I said, there is only one option to the Lord. Either you heal me or I declare myself sick. <laughs> Either you heal me or I declare myself sick. And no, no, no. I prayed that night. It was after weeks that I remembered I used to have a problem. Have you experienced that thing before? You are healed, but you are forgotten you had a problem. <laughs> Tomorrow about this time, eh, you will forget you were owing money. You will forget you had a sickness. You will forget you were in debt. Clap your hands and shout, I believe. First degree, we used to pray. Those of you who are in tech, Queen's Hall, we pray from six to six. One day we went and prayed like that. When we finished the prayer, I came back home. I couldn't breathe. I would have to yawn to breathe. I went to the doctor. When I I just I greeted him and I said the word. He said, "Are you a prayer secretary?" I said, "Yes." I said, "How do you know?" He said, "It's in it has, it's showing in your voice." I said, this is my problem. What do we do? Wrote stuff, came and said, okay, well, uh, he gave me some medication. He said, it looks like you have asthma. So I said, how long will I take the medicine? So you'll be on it forever. I said, the devil is a liar. I came back to my room. What? I'm not saying if the doctor gives you medicine, don't take it. No, 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 no. Follow the instruction. But let your faith also help you. I came back to my room and said, how can a young man like me take this? Then I called my father. I said, this is what the doctor said. Oh, your grandfather also had asthma. And your grandfather's brother has asthma. When I heard that, I located the dustbin. I looked for the dustbin and I put the asthma drug inside. Look, there are errors that will not leave you if you are not radical. There are errors that will not disappear from your life if you are not radical. And today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I declare in the name of Jesus, by the anointing of God, right now, Ayana Masua Katama, any error they have imposed on you, any error they have placed on you, today we break that error. We break the backbone of that error from your life, from your lineage, from your blood, on your kidneys, on your liver, on your womb, on your health, on your finances, on your marriage, on your career, on your ministry, on your investment. Right now, let the error crash, let the error be broken. Holy 
Tell me, 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 tell me